every time I open up one of these packages from Amazon, I'm always surprised at how easily they come open. Now the boxes are secure, but these, these envelopes, they just almost fall open. Anyway, the stuff always has got to me in the past, and I'm hoping it will in the future. But I think they open up way too easy. Okay, it's here. Now we can test the mag switch. Now this is the model that goes up to 600 pounds. Um, there has been time in the past when I've been sort of curious, how much do some of my machines weigh? I don't think any of them weigh over 600 pounds, although possibly this table saw with the stand does. Now, however, now that I've got the scale, I probably will never weigh anything that's really heavy. It's possible that the one that uh, only goes up to uh, 240 pounds might be more accurate when it comes to dealing with lighter weights. Uh, you know, like from zero to 240. But I think that the margin of error is going to be so slim that in this case, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Now you would think that by now I would know how to automatically open this style of box. It's not like it was my first one. Now for some reason I can never figure out, oh here we go. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess if it's six, 600 pounds, it has to be heavy duty. Okay. I don't see any batteries in the box, so I hope it comes with a battery. Well, it looks like double A's and I got lots of those. I've got some no-name alkaline here. I think they're going to be plenty good enough. By the way, this is uh, metal. It's not plastic. I hope you notice I'm not using my electric drill. I'm slipping. Okay, you know what? Maybe I better look in the instructions here. See you in a few minutes. Well, I think this part of it's finished. I use CA glue here to reinforce the uh, countersink so that the heads of the screws wouldn't pull through. And these are the screws, so they're not going to be coming out. This is oak. And I believe this is a 3 8 inch, uh, yeah, it's 3 8 inch uh, bolt. So it's not going to be bending and causing any springiness that's going to, you know, when it suddenly breaks loose, it's not going to go springing up against the scale. That was a big concern. And uh, what else was I going to show you here? I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing. You notice there's a little bit of play there. Well, the reason for that is so that if this was too thick, a lot of the energy would be taken up just pressing down against this, and I wanted this to be loose. That should be all right. Oh, and another thing. 
I'm going to show you a place on the bottom of my table saw that you've never seen before. Now even I can't remember the last time I saw this. It was most likely when I put this table saw together several years ago. Now you're going to notice that uh, reinforced webbing going on there. I don't know what it's called, but uh, I guess people that do casting know. Anyway, it was cast that way, to make the tabletop stronger. Now, that to my way of thinking means that depending on where you put the magnet, it's going to hold more on one place than the other. So I'm going to try and mark on the top where those uh, cross pieces are, and we'll try it where it's thick, and we'll try it where it's thin. Okay, right here is where one of those cross members actually is. It's probably within a sixteenth of an inch of being dead on. Right here is in between two. There's one here, there's one over here. This is where it'd be its thinnest. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Hard to believe that my table saw was cleaned off when I started this project this morning. Yeah, anyway, we're almost ready to uh, start. I've got ten of these. I've got four of the bigger ones and six of the small ones. Um, I'd forgotten I had some in the uh, metal room. Now, speaking of metal, these things will get loaded with iron filings. And you might think, what am I going to do? Because you can't pick them off, you can't, and it, it doesn't work when you use a little uh, a, a rag of any kind. You just, you, there's always a little, little bit left. Well, what works really good is the air hose with the, uh, with the nozzle on the end. And you just have to make sure that, you know, you're, you're going to spray it or you don't care if the iron filings go and also wear safety glasses, just in case you don't want to be getting iron filings in your eyes. Uh, it works super. I mean, uh, I did it this morning, and uh, I, I can't even tell which, which ones it was, it was the smaller, some of the smaller ones. I can't even tell which ones it was. There's absolutely no iron filings left at all. It gets them off almost instantly. It's amazing. So, uh, yeah, if you if you got iron filings on your magnets and you want to know how to get it off, use the air hose. Now I know you've heard me say this before, and I'm going to say it again. You're going to see this along with me for the first time. Now, the only thing that I did do was uh, to check to make sure that my distances were okay. Uh, but I did not have this unit turned on. Okay, I think that's going to be alright. I'm going to just move around to the other side now. Okay, I think I managed it without knocking the camera over. Alright, this is just a crowbar as you can see. Okay, we'll take the slack off. Turn it on. And I think it should zero itself. Okay, there we go. Well, here's test number one. No, oh, I'm gonna have to readjust something. This thing here is tipping forward on me. Okay, I realize this looks awful. Well, that's pretty solid. It's not going to fall forward now. Okay, here we go. Take number two. Give it some slack. Turn it on. Let it zero itself. And we'll try it again. Steady pressure here. You know, I'm just realizing another thing. And that is this. That when it breaks loose, my arm is pressing down so terribly hard, it's just going to go flying. This is going to go up and my arm's going to go flying down and who knows where this bar is going to go. I gotta come up with something else here. This is the bar 
out of my hollow chisel mortiser. It's almost twice as long and it's just as strong. I knew that one day I'd use that machine. Anyway, we'll try it again. Oh shoot. Get this nice and straight. Don't want it to be pulling at an angle. I have a little bit of slack. Turn it on. Let it go to zero. Okay. Now I'm going to go around the other side. Ah, better go on a diet here. Okay. Now, I won't be able to watch the gauge, so you guys are going to have to watch the gauge for me. I'm putting my hand on here, so if it lets go all of a sudden, it's not going to go flying off the end of the bar. Anyway, here we go. Okay, I we saw that, I'll do it again. Did I go too fast? I'll go slower. Okay, that's it. I'm kind of anxious to see what that was myself. Remember I said I'm going to see it along with you? Well, you got to see it first. Okay, let's turn this off here. Now let's put one of the smaller ones in. I guess I'm not going to get to see it until I go up to the computer. I'm sure there's a more awkward way to do this if I try. Yeah, I, I really need uh, a third hand for this kind of stuff. Okay, we've got the smaller one in there. Now we'll give it some slack. Turn it on, let it zero itself. Okay, now I'm going to go around the other side. See, is that straight? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Here we go, steady pressure. Oh, well, that was a lot easier. I could tell by the feel of it. Do it again. Okay, in the last two hours I was up at the computer editing out those last few scenes that we just saw. And what I saw coincided with the way it felt on the bar here. The very first pull seemed to be a lot stronger for some reason than the uh, subsequent pulls. Anyway, I've moved this whole thing back a little bit. Here's where we were before. Now we're on the place where there is no cross member and uh, let's give it another go. Okay, <clears throat> I think we're pretty well straight up and down here. Give it a little slack and turn it on here. Zero. Now I'll go around to the other side again. Okay, I think this time what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and go just a little bit more, a more even pull. I think if I can go nice and steady, we might get a more accurate reading. Well, I don't know what that said, but guess we'll soon find out. No use doing it a second time. Well, we will, but it'll probably be less. Yeah, I can, I can feel it was less. All right, um, now we'll do the small one. Okay, I'll give it some slack here. It's on zero. You know what? Maybe I don't need to go to the other side. Let's try it like this. Okay, go down. Okay. 
It is what it is. Well, I have no idea what happened there with the small one. It didn't get anywhere close to what I thought it should. Yeah, that was unusual. Maybe I wasn't using the same mag switch as I was before. Maybe I should test them all. After all, I did number them, but, you know, I'm getting too tired, and I think probably nobody cares. Well, I am happy with them anyway. I'm not going to quit using them just because maybe they don't come up to the specifications that MagSwitch says they're supposed to have. Now, maybe we'll just take a look at those specifications just for fun. Now, according to the specification, MagSwitch says that the big one will go up to 133 pounds. Now, that would be maximum. That would be under ideal conditions. That might not include cast iron. Maybe it means some kind of steel. Anyway, I think, what did we get it up to, 117? That wasn't too shabby. Now the smaller one, MagSwitch says it's supposed to go up to 71 pounds under ideal conditions. Now, well they don't say under ideal conditions, they just say that's the maximum, so I'm assuming it's under ideal conditions. But we got it up to 68. There again, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now you might think that I'm kind of pushing these things and probably I sell them or I'm getting some sort of commission. Nope. I just enjoy using them. You want to know where you can buy them? Here you go. In the meantime, thanks for watching. <laughs>